All right, let us welcome one of the big winners from UFC Fight Island 7. He knocked out Joaquin Buckley in the first round on the promotion's debut on ABC. Happy to have Alessio DiCurico on the program. Alessio, how are you, sir? Very good, guys. Hi, everybody. It's great to have you here. So we are about five days removed from the big win. You came in losing your last three fights, snapped that streak in a big way. How does it all feel a few days later after the finish? Ah, it is uh, finally some some quiet. I had I had finally quiet and peace that I deserve. There you go. Were you not feeling the quiet and peace heading into the fight? Eh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely, I wasn't in quiet and peace. Uh, there was a, a storm inside my hand, means inside my head. So. But now it's very, it's everything okay. So after, so basically like after you finish the fight, you land the kick and the fight is ended. Was it like a big weight lifted off of your shoulders? Yeah. Ah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, at, at, the, at the end of the fight, uh, I was like uh, drained, you know, um, all the adrenaline went out and I, I feel like, like, like lost, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, I mean, was there just like a lot of pressure on you? I, mean, I know you did some interviews, you and I had spoken, you know, somewhat not like this, but we had had a, like a sort of a texting conversation on Instagram. Were you feeling a lot of pressure heading into that fight? Absolutely, yes. Was it just the losing streak? Was it the matchup itself? Or was it, you know, kind of a combination of the two? Yes. It was the, the the losing streak, the fact that uh, Joaquin Bugley is absolutely absolutely a, a very a very go, good uh, good fighter and uh, in my opinion is still one of the of the prospect of the of the division and uh, yeah, it was all together. One of the things we all noticed heading into the fight, Alessio, and we all commented on this heading in, we thought the betting lines heading into this fight were outrageous. Like you had told me heading in that you respected Joaquin, you thought his knockouts were amazing, but you weren't overly impressed to get put in the position that he was put in. Were you noticing that the betting lines and that you were such a huge underdog heading into the fight, did you notice sort of the disrespect you were getting from the betting lines? Ti sei sentito offeso dal fatto che le, le scommesse ti davano ampiamente uh, perdente? Uh, yeah, about betting. No, absolutely. I don't feel like this respect, no, you know. Uh, I, I don't care about this. I don't care about, uh, about uh, comment on social media. No, I, I, only, I only listen in uh, my coach, my staff, uh, my, my, my very good friend. Uh, so I, I don't feel like this about that. Did you, in a way, I mean, it was obviously draining to you being put in such a high pressure position, knowing you had to win the matchup itself. In a weird way, do you almost prefer it that way because you performed so well under all of that pressure? Uh, yeah, my, my my mental coach uh, say that uh, uh, unless you you have to see to stay on high pressure to to perform uh, to perform at the best, and he he also uh, invite me to 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 do how much interview I can, how much um, uh, social media stories to post because uh, he think that I am uh, like a performer. And uh, I, I want to be humble, but he, he said this, and uh, and I, I can I can I do my best under pressure. The head kick was absolutely beautiful. It was timed perfectly, and just like that, the fight was over. Was that something that you and your team saw in preparation? Like, did you guys know that the opening would be I there for that kick? I don't remember it, my friend. I still don't remember. It was absolutely instant. <laughs> you don't remember? Yeah, no, you know the the best thing I do in uh, in, in fighting, I don't remember it. <laughs> Have you gone back and watched it? I assume you've watched it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot. I think that I think that uh, the, the head kick landed because of the, the precedence to uh, mm -hmm. like leg kick. 
No, how many so times? How many two. times have you watched I, it? Two. I remember two. <laughs> Was it amazing, yeah. like watching it back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, how long have you been working with the mental coach? You mentioned obviously that was a very important aspect heading into this fight, but how long have you been working with with uh, this mental coach? It's it's kind of uh, an year, an year right now, one year. One year. Seem to have made a has it made a big difference? You think? Yeah, absolutely. It it, it, it take out the best uh, from um, from me. So the win was great. It was memorable, but a lot of people were talking about what happened after the fight because John Anik goes to give you an interview and you essentially said, you know what? I'm very happy with the win, but then you ultimately declined the interview. And then when you're with the media, probably about 20 minutes later, same thing. You were happy, but you declined to continue on. And the reason was- You, 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 you didn't listen that I call John Ariel. That was you the <laughs> <laughs> that was the, the worst stuff ever. <laughs> Is that so? Did you actually think it was? Was that just a mistake, or did you actually think that was oh, Ariel? Just a mistake. Just a mistake. I know. Uh, I know that Ariel is not working for them. But you know, after the way, I, I almost cried. You know, it was. Uh, I was drained. I was fully emotionally involved. Then uh, after the fight. Yeah. So yes, after the fight, I declined the interview. Uh, it was a choice that I made. Uh, at least two or two fights before this fight. No, that, that there's something in my mind. There is now a, a like like an attitude, you know, in this uh, in this in this business that uh, if you win, you are the the best person, the best athlete in athlete in the in the world. And if you lose, you are uh, you are trash. No, you know what I mean. And uh, I think that. Uh, the, 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 this is going to change absolutely for us, for fighters. I, I know that if a fighter got, got knocked out, uh, he can't interview. I know. But if the, if the, the, the decision go on the points in, in, uh, in the case of a close decision, I think a fighter would have the, the opportunity no, to, to speak, to, to be interviewed. Yeah, and I think that was sort of where a lot of people are coming from. And and let me just say this, if someone had reached out to me like right now and said, hey, Mike, will you interview Joaquin? I would 100% talk to Joaquin and get his thoughts on it because I feel, but I understand where you're coming from. But you know, to ask a guy who just got knocked out to do an interview, it's tough and you understand that. So I get what you're saying. Even I actually spoke with Uriah Hall the other day, top 10 guy in your division. He loved what you did. He thought that was like the best thing in the world. So I'm curious after everything, Few days later, if you could go back and do it over again, would you do it the same way? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. You would do it again. So, uh, so I'm wondering, since we're talking right now, why did you decide to to have this conversation? Were you just you ready to talk now at this point? Because you had declined the other interviews. What sort of made you want to speak today? That because um, I didn't. I didn't say um, um, I don't want, I don't want be I, I won't be cleared no I don't start make things clear I want to make things clear no and uh, I want to explain what I have to say and also I I have sent my message that's what I want to do I I I liked it it got a lot of attention I think like on our YouTube page I think your 40 second scrum of you sitting with the media did like. I think like five times better than Max Holloway's scrum, if you can believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the performance of Max Holloway was a uh, was a uh, a piece of art, in my opinion. So yes, I uh, I am happy about this. But I, but I I want to say that I absolutely don't want to um, uh, disrespect journalists. Absolutely, I don't want to dis disrespect uh, your job. I, I want, only want to send this, mes this, this message to try to change seeing and for fighters and make it just a little bit better. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually agree with that stance a hundred percent. And absolutely, it the, the it didn't was a, a polemic against UFC. Absolutely. Wait, can you say that one more time? 
it uh, didn't was a kind of something kind of polemic against the UFC. Okay. Yeah. No, um, because no, Dana, Dana White, yeah, Dana White was asked about that at the press conference and he actually said that he went back to congratulate you for the win. And then he yeah. said that you and your team basically like mean mugged him and you just stared right through him in essence. Like, is that yeah. true? Like what happened there? As, as I say, I was full drained after the, the fight. I almost did not rec rec recognize him. And uh, so I, I, I asked him sorry um, but to him, to Mick Maynard. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was a, a crazy reaction uh, after the win. One of my favorite things about the interview that we did before the fight was when I asked you what your message was to the fans and people out there who were doubting you heading into the fight, your answer was, they will be new fans of mine on Saturday night. So did that happen? Like, have you noticed a lot of new people following you on social media? <laughs> Absolutely, yes, it was. It was, it was, I, um, I, in, in, in my social media, how many, how many people love me? Like, like 20,000, 20,000 people. Yeah. That's my son. I'm sorry. Yeah? It's okay. 20, 20,000 new people. Yes. Wow. That's crazy. Is that like shocking to you? Yeah. I didn't expect maybe it was also um, uh, about for, for ABC. Oh yeah. That's true as well. So your, I see your son back there. How much has your son motivated you to, to help? I mean, you've been drained and obviously when you become a parent, I'm a parent, I have a seven year old son. So I understand how that can change us and motivate us in different ways. So how much has, you know, your son motivated you? Uh, absolutely. It's, uh, my son, my, my family, you know, uh, on March, uh, uh, will be, um, we born my, um, another son. And uh, family is uh, something that I always want in my life, and uh, the, it's the the only important th thing, only important stuff to fight. No, and it, it changed completely my my mind as a fighter. No, at the start you fight for passion because uh, you love it. Now now I I, I fight only because it's the, the best thing I I know to do to provide to my family. And uh, it completely change and uh, make my life uh, so so much better. People people are afraid to get a son, no. But uh, I think that um, athlete life, no, uh, have a diet, training, uh, go sleep early. It's uh, it, it's enough to uh, to compare with a father life. You, you understand? No. So oh, I definitely understand. I mean, I'm not a fighter, but I understand where you're coming from. It's it's a full time job, right? Yeah, it's a full time job, but um, it's a, it's a good training to be athlete, to be father. No? So it, it it did not change my my did not change it, my 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 routine. So as uh, I do the, the same stuff and uh, but uh, give me so much motivation, so much reason to fight. That's great. And I, I understand where you're coming from a hundred percent. Um, c can I ask you about Kevin Holland? Because when you, when we, when we spoke, you said that you watched the fight with Kevin Holland and Buckley, you said you, you needed to watch that to, to learn some tendencies. Uh, but you thought Joaquin Butler, Joaquin Buckley, excuse me, was better than that clown known as Kevin Holland. And you fought Kevin as well. Can you talk about why you feel that way about Kevin? Like, why do you feel he's a clown? Yeah, ah, because uh, he, he is, uh, his word are empty. He's, uh, he's an empty, um, he, he only do for show, no? All, everything he do is only for show. He's, uh, he's all involved in this, in this game uh, created by Conor McGregor the, about, uh, about the respect, uh, about hate, about show, no, something I don't like. I never, I never, I will never like in this business. And uh, I don't want to trash talk with Kevin Holland. I respect him uh, as an athlete, but I think that Buckley accept his fight uh, like uh, six, six or seven days short notice. So he, he wasn't ready to fight him. And. Uh, um, I 
I, I think that Kevin. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know him because if you if you know really a person, uh, I think that uh, um, you you always can find something good, you know, in a person. But for everything he he do in the octagon with me, before the fight in a podcast, after the fight, after the fight, uh, I I I don't like him. I don't like him. I. I I will be very, very uh, grato, grateful, great for for fighting him. To fight him again, eat him again. He's actually he's about to fight Derek Brunson on March twentieth. How do you how do you see that fight playing it's, out? It's confirmed. Okay, perfect. Uh, I, I think uh, I will train uh, and uh, in the case uh, the. Something go to go wrong. I I will do the the best to to take this fight. Okay. This, this and all the fight of Kevin Holland. So if something happens to that fight on March twentieth. You're ready to step in and and take a spot here. Yes. Who do you think wins that fight? Do you think Brunson wins or Holland wins? I think that uh, you know Kevin has a um, has an attitude uh, speaking uh, uh, d- during the fight that uh, he, he can um, influence the the judge. Just so. he can influence the judge. So he, is, is it it is possible that Kevin uh, take it in the points? As far as you go, of course you want to be ready for that fight if something were to happen, but. Let's just say everything goes the way it's planned to go. When would you like to return? Like you were only in there for a little over two minutes. Do you want to get back in there relatively soon, or do you want to take some time because you were so drained after the build up to this fight? No, no, I am ready for fight again. Now, now I, I take a week for um, vacation and uh, to to don't think about the future. But uh, man, I have to soon. Uh, I have to pay the rent. No. So let's let's work. Let's get you back in there, right? Yeah. But you want to wait till probably like after, before the birth of your second child, or after? Do you want to try to wait till after? Yeah, I prefer. Uh, it's, it's okay also before. I think I can accept also, and um, no, he is expected to to to, um, to burn in uh, in the end of March. So till 20 March, I can, uh, I think I can, I can accept the fight. So, but. Nice. Um, last thing before we let you go. Oh, go my, my babysitter, so I, <laughs> I, I can leave, I can leave my, my wife with her, no? and I'm pretty sure that at, at 3 a.m. I can uh, do everything for her. He doesn't, he doesn't charge you any money to babysit, does he? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last thing, I, man. I, I, <laughs> I work for free. I work for free with his son. Uh, <laughs> uh, there, there you go. Find yourself, find yourself somebody like that in your life, and and you're good to go. Uh, I, I wanted to end with this because you seem to be making it a point to support the fighters, to support the sport, and make sure that MMA is presented in a positive way. So what? is the message for everybody following this win on Saturday and about the state of MMA in general? MMA is a sport, just this. MMA is a sport. Some, sometimes it, it is um, uh, confused, it, it, it is confused with, um, with show, sometimes with, um, with wrestling, pro wrestling, no? Uh, but MMA is a sport. It's changed my life, and uh, every people have to understand this. I hope one day it will go to the to the Olympics. That would be great. Do you think it'll ever happen? Do you think we'll get to that point? <laughs> Difficult. Yeah, it's very I agree. Difficult. But uh, I hope. Yeah, that would be something else. But Alessio, congratulations on the win. Really impressive stuff. Can't wait to see what's next for you. Hopefully we get you on that March 20th card one way or the other. But uh, but I appreciate the time, man. I, I respect everything you did on Saturday, in the fight, after the fight, all of that stuff. And uh, 
you, you stood your ground and, and I respect that a lot about you. So congratulations, enjoy it, enjoy your vacation and uh, we'll see you back in there soon, man. Thank you so much, Mike, also for this um, opportunity to explain what I said. And uh, sorry for my English. I'm I'm growing up about. about Are you doing? This. You did a great job. You did awesome. Yeah. He, he, he don't believe so. <laughs> you don't <laughs> think so? <laughs> I force him. I force him to study English. You know, he has to study his techniques, his jab, his low kick, his high kicks. There's more need to study English. You know. <laughs> But it's a champ on that too. I will do it on uh, Netflix. That's my guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to learn, my man. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, Mike.